Welcome back to the BigML tutorial series. In this video, we'll be discussing BigML's time series modeling capabilities. To start out, we'll give a brief introduction to what time series data is and how time series data is different from other standard data types. Next, we'll talk about the different ways in which BigML models time series data and how it selects the best model for your data. After that, we'll create a BigML time series model in one click and show you how you can use this model to make a forecast about future instances. Finally, we'll talk a bit about time series evaluations and how to compare different time series models. Let's do a quick review of what supervised learning data looks like in the usual case. In traditional supervised learning, your dataset is a series of rows and columns where each row represents a data point or instance and each column or field represents some piece of information about that instance. In this toy dataset, we're trying to decide whether an object is a pen, an apple, or a pineapple based on its color and its mass. Machine learning algorithms try to find patterns based on the color and the mass that will allow prediction of the type with high accuracy. An important thing to note is that the ordering of the instances in this dataset do not affect the patterns, Said another way, the instances in this dataset are independent of one another. The type of a given instance does not depend on which instances are before or after. With time series data, the patterns we are trying to discover are a bit different. Here, our data points are ordered in time, and the patterns we are trying to extract are the patterns between one instance and the next, running vertically down the rows of the dataset. In this toy dataset, we have imagined numbers for a yearly pineapple harvest. Plotting these numbers as the year increases, we see a clear pattern which we call the trend in the data. If we can discover this trend, we can make good predictions about what future points in the data will look like. Note that in this data, unlike in traditional supervised learning, the discovered patterns depend on the ordering of the instances. If you shuffle the instances, the pattern will no longer be the same. To discover the pattern in your time series data, BigML attempts to fit a variety of exponential smoothing models to the data. Essentially, this means that the model's forecast is based on a weighted combination of the instances that came before the forecast instance. An instance's weight in this combination is determined by how far back in time the instance is. Instances in the more recent past are considered more relevant than instances in the distant past. Besides this, BigML tries to account for three other factors when fitting a time series model. The first is the overall trend in the data, that is, whether the values in the data are getting lower or higher in general as time goes on. The trend can be either additive, meaning that the values are going up by a constant amount at each time step, or multiplicative, meaning that the values are going up by an amount that is growing geometrically. The second factor is the seasonality. Seasonality refers to any pattern in the data that repeats for a constant number of instances. For example, daily traffic volumes might have a repeating pattern that happens every seven instances due to the cycle of weekdays and weekends. Monthly average temperatures have a cycle that lasts every 12 instances, corresponding to the yearly cycle of the seasons. Seasonality can also be additive or multiplicative, depending on whether the periodic variations of the data are constant or get larger as the values in the data increase. The final thing that the model attempts to account for is error. This is variation based on noise that cannot be accounted for by trend or seasonality. Again, this can be additive or multiplicative based on whether or not the error is constant regardless of the values in the data or gets larger as the data values increase in size. To spare you from having to discover on your own which model best fits your data, BigML fits them all to your data, labeling each one with a three-part code. In the code, the first part refers to the error, the second to the trend, and the third to the seasonality. BigML then chooses the best model from among all of the fitted models, taking into account both how well the model fits the training data and how complex the model is, preferring models that both fit well and are low complexity. 
Here, we see a dataset giving average daily milk production for each month of the year in pounds per cow for a certain region in the 1960s. Let's fit a time series model to this data in one click. To compute the goodness of fit of each model candidate, BigML makes a one-step look-ahead prediction on each instance in the training data, using the instances before that one as input to the model. We thus get a reasonable idea of how well the model would have predicted the instances in the sequence. Here, in the visualization of our trained model, we see that the model's predictions in blue very closely match the actual data in black, indicating that our chosen model is a very good fit to the training data. It's also obvious that the data has some level of seasonality from its wave-like shape. And in fact, at the right, we see that the chosen model has additive error, additive trend, and additive seasonality. If you expand the panel near the bottom of the screen, you can see the performance of all of the models that BigML fit to the data. In this case, the bottom of the list contains all of the models that do not account for seasonality indicating that the data was strongly periodic. Enabling one of these models in the graph above, we can see that its predictions significantly lag the truth. To view a forecast of future points, we can use the Forecast Horizon slider at the lower right. This will show the model's forecast for the future beyond the time series it sees in training. The model's prediction is shown in the same color. In a lighter color, we show a confidence interval around the model's prediction. While the model's prediction will obviously not perfectly agree with what actually happens, there is a high probability that the actual value will fall in this interval. Finally, let's talk briefly about evaluations. To evaluate a standard supervised learning model, the usual procedure is to hold out a randomly chosen subset of the data so that we can evaluate on data that we have not seen in training. We'll use the same idea for time series evaluations. Of course, holding out randomly selected data instances will not work for time series data because the model relies on the values of adjacent points to make its predictions. As such, to evaluate a time series model, we'll hold out a continuous chunk of points at the end of the dataset and see how well we can use the instances in the past to predict the values for those in the future. Returning to our milk production dataset, we can use the gears icon to do a configurable training and test split. Here, we'll select the linear option, indicating that we'd like a split based on the last 20% of the instances in the data. The interface immediately brings up the 80% that comprises the training half of the split, and we'll use that to train our model. After training is complete, we can go to Evaluate in the Model Resource view, select our test data set, and perform an evaluation. The resulting interface shows the fit to the training data as before, but the forecast is replaced with the model's forecast on the held out test data set. You can see that the model's predictions do not match the test data nearly as well as the training data, which is of course why we must evaluate the model on held out data to get an accurate estimate of its performance. The performance is still fairly good however, with an R-squared of about 0.9. In the panel at the bottom of the screen, you can again see all of the fitted models and their performances on the held out data. The table measures performance in a variety of different ways, all of which are explained in the dashboard documentation. To review, in this video we learned about time series data, and how it's different from non-time series supervised learning data. We then discuss the different techniques BigML uses to model time series data, and some of the different ways it can account for the variation that it sees. Next, we use BigML to create a one-click time series model, and explored that model in the interface, including the ability to make a forecast of future data. 
Finally, we talked about how to evaluate a time series model and how to interpret the results of the evaluation.